Hey guys, what's up? By Sectatron here from One Hive Gazette, here with the next video, and this one is focusing on the witches at Town Hall 9. We kind of saw these at the end of the last attack meta video, wasn't able to talk too much about them, so I want to make an attack strategy video dealing with the mass witch attack. We're going to take a look at a couple variations, three attacks today. I'm not going to be evaluating you know, whether it takes a lot of skill because some people do argue that it's kind of a spam attack and it's not healthy for the game. I'm gonna stay away from that. I'll let you guys decide your own thoughts on that. I just wanna show a strategy that is working and is worth using uh, on certain bases for getting the three stars. So let's take a look at the first attack here, legendary. All these coming from Genesis, of course. Um, we'll fast forward to the start here. Should drop his troops any moment. There go the witches, and basically what you'll notice right away is the witches are not always supposed to go inside the base. Um, basically what you're doing, the essence of this attack, is sending enough into the base that you can get the core taken out, but your main power play are the witches, and sometimes you have some other troops like wizards going around the outside of the base and kind of wrapping it up from the outside. Now the problem is if your kill squad that goes into the base, that's typically um, a golem, your heroes, uh, some bowlers usually, if that force doesn't get the core of the base taken out, the witches are going to have a trouble getting back inside the base after they go 180 around to the other side. So you can see here for Legendary, it's important that his heroes get the big chunk of the base taken out, they get the expos, they pretty much get everything necessary in order for the witches to be able to handle everything else. Now if you do it right, especially if there's not many wizard towers around the outside of the base or towards the back of the base, you can, those witches can stay up pretty much the entire attack because while there's giant bombs and all kinds of stuff that can kill witches inside the base, a lack right now at Town Hall 9 base building are defenses and certain traps and stuff to kill witches outside of the base. So you can see right here, the expo actually doesn't go down. Fortunately, it's caught up on a golemite. Um, so it's going to be a little bit of an issue, but the core of the base for the most part has been taken out, especially relative to the top of the base. That way that main force of three witches and the wizard don't have to worry about being targeted by defenses that they can't reach, at least uh, for the next few moments. Now the queen's going to step up, do some more damage. He has a jump and a heal spell left, which was actually kind of interesting. Uh, just never used them. Maybe he was thinking about swagging them. Maybe he's just saving them for right now because they are going to be useful. We'll go ahead and go times two here as they go through the wall. Goes ahead and drops that jump and drops the heal. Good choices. Uh, no splash damage left. And a few hogs he was holding on to until now. Um, one of the great things about this attack is you have plenty of time because basically you're starting all your troops for the most part at once. So you have the entire three minutes uh, and it seems like this attacks go forever, but they're usually not that long and you don't have to worry as much about running out of time as you do with multi-part attacks. So taking a look at 23 here, Tinge, uh, this one is a bit of a different variation. It's using some healers and we'll see how he does that right here. Uh, starting at the top with a group of witches and then two healers, same thing on the other side. You can see he doesn't even have to worry about the mortar initially targeting the witches because that little amount of damage it does is nothing with the healers there. Now, one of the main reasons he has the healers is because there's wizard towers on both sides here, which are gonna be a threat for the witches. Now, the witches did get an HP buff. They do have as many hit points as maybe, maybe 1.5 times a wizard. I don't know how good that of a how good that can help you guys imagine it, but they can survive like a giant bomb. They do have that many hit points. So as long as you have the healers on them, it's hard to kill them, especially for splash damage and giant bombs, because the healers, even two of them, typically heal them right back up. So it's a bit of an investment. It takes, you know, 28 troop space on either side, but it allows you to get more with less. Those two witches at the right side of the screen and the uh, few witches, like three witches at the top, are going to get tremendous value, and they've probably taken, you know, a ton of damage, enough to kill multiple witches, but the constant heal effect, if the healers stay with the witches, which can be tricky sometimes, but if that does happen, uh, you can get the base taken out very easily. Heal spells are good uh, for your kill squad. Rages, jumps, the typical stuff you use on a kill squad. A nice combination of those. And you can see the queen and a few witches do go to the middle of the base. So you can use witches up the gut along with your golems, your heroes, and your bowlers. But the main thing that makes this strategy unique is you're going to send witches along the outside of the base like you would at some of these Town Hall 11 and Town Hall 10 attacks uh, that have now spread down to Town Hall 9. So fortunately the queen gets that dragon taken out. 
that's typically going to be a good um, defense against witches, dragons, baby dragons. You do run the risk of the queen just taking it out in the kill squad, but you can get lucky, and the attacker almost did with the queen not getting it down, but she just barely does. As a result, uh, this base is finished, has a few giants to tank for these heroes, actually, to let the witches kind of get those skellies out in front, and they will take out the heroes along with the help of a wizard over there. That one witch just not dying against this cannon, uh, pretty miraculous, but it has those two healers that have served it well throughout the entire attack. Once again, time does become an issue, but um, it's not as much of an issue because you're going to start these witches at the beginning of the attack. So you typically have enough time. The queen eventually goes down. She can't take out the skeleton spawned by like three witches. That's just way too fast for her. Awesome stuff to Tenge. Let's move on to one more attack. So number 27, Iceman. This one, um, the defenses are lower, I will say that, but the splash damage is actually maxed, which um, is the biggest threat to your witches. The heroes are maxed too, but that's not as important. So a little bit of an easier base, but still not that uh, of a push, much of a pushover, especially for this strategy. Um, same kind of principle as the last attack, two healers on each side. He's deploying most of his witches, about four on either side, I think, then two to go up the gut. Now, it's always a little bit sketchy in terms of which witches, <laughs> which witches walk and which witches go into the base. Um, kind of deja vu there, but because the funnel is never completely clear for witches. So sometimes you may want four to go to the outside of the base and only two do. Some, the words are just rhyming so weirdly. Sometimes only two do, and sometimes you want uh, like four witches to go the outside and like six will. So it can be a little bit tricky. You just gotta do your best to funnel the right number in. However many it's gonna take to get that core taken out is typically what you wanna do. Don't do too much more, because the problem with not having enough witches going to the outside is the ring of defenses that the kill squad doesn't get. They'll take out the core, but the defenses on the outside, like these guys right here mainly, along with what was at the top, those can kind of flank your kill squad. They surround the witches that would be around where this jump spell is, and they would be kind of firing in at all directions, which is not good. It'll take those witches out quickly. So you want to make sure you have just kind of the minimum almost necessary to get into the base take out the core, and then the rest of your troops can go around the outside. You don't have to take out the back of the base because the witches will go 180. Each side would make a 180 journey around the base, and as long as those defenses are reachable, they can get them taken out. The one air defense is the only exception here, but of course it's not an issue, so it's fine that his kill squad doesn't get that. The healer will go down, but at this point it doesn't matter. Um, so great stuff to all attackers from this video. Hope this shed some light, some clarity on what can seem to be kind of a random type of deployment with these witches at Town Hall 9, but I think they might have a future. I'm personally not a huge fan of them. They're not always reliable. I think some of the more golem-based attacks with hogs and balloons are more reliable three stars if you put in the planning, but this one is definitely an option, so I wanted to share it with you guys. Troll test the up top, but it'll go down, of course. Nice attack to Iceman. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you guys later with, um, I guess, a CWL recap not long from now. Should be an exciting weekend of CWL. I'll do my best to cover it. See you guys in the next video. Bye, Sectatron out.